I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the deep woods of the Pacific Northwest, nestled between the towering moss-draped fir trees and the perpetually misty mornings, there lay a town that appeared untouched by time. The town of Silverwood had a population that scarcely topped a thousand, a close-knit community that thrived on logging and folklore. Among the legends that circulated was that of the Silverwood Beast, a creature of nightmare and shadow that was whispered about in the dimly lit taverns and around crackling campfires. Jacob Marley, a descendant of one of Silverwood's founding families, was a man of few words, but many scars. Known in the region not just for his skills as a tracker and hunter, but also for his uncanny understanding of the supernatural, Jacob had dedicated his life to the family legacy of protecting the town from the creatures that lurked in the unseen corners of the world. The legend of the Silverwood Beast, a creature believed by many to be a werewolf, was his inheritance, a call to arms passed down through generations. On a night where the moon hung full and bright, casting a silver sheen over the glistening leaves and the damp undergrowth, Jacob set out with his trusted rifle, silver bullets gleaming in the moonlight. He was accompanied by his old friend Elias, a fellow hunter who had seen the beast years ago and had been saved by Jacob's timely intervention. The two men ventured deep into the forest, where the canopy was so thick it swallowed sound and the path was known only to those who had wandered it for years. The air was thick with the scent of pine and wet earth, a scent that often masked the more ominous odors of the wild. As they reached a clearing known locally as the Moon's Hollow, an area where the trees strangely formed a perfect circle, leaving the center exposed to the sky, they paused. This place had always been at the heart of the tales, where the beast was most often sighted during the full moon. Jacob and Elias set up their camp with practiced ease, the silence between them comfortable, filled only with the familiar sounds of the night. But as the hours passed, a different air fell over Moon's Hollow. The usual nocturnal sounds ceased abruptly, replaced by a heavy, oppressive silence that seemed to press against the ears. Jacob's gaze sharpened, and he signaled Elias to extinguish the fire. Darkness enveloped them, thick and complete. They waited, their breath slow and controlled, rifles at the ready. Suddenly, a low growl echoed from the edge of the clearing, a sound primal and guttural that sent shivers down Jacob's spine. He had heard many sounds in the woods, but none quite like this. The growl grew into a snarl, then into a howl that reverberated through the trees, a mournful and terrifying sound that seemed to speak of ancient anger and insatiable hunger. From the shadows emerged a figure, massive and imposing, its eyes glowing an unnatural yellow in the darkness. Its fur was matted, the color of the night, and its teeth gleamed white and sharp as it snarled at the hunters. Jacob stood still, his experience holding his fear at bay, his rifle aimed directly at the beast's heart. The werewolf charged, moving with a speed that belied its size, and Jacob fired. The shot rang out, loud and clear, echoing through the trees. But in a moment that made his heart sink, Jacob realized the shot had missed its mark, only grazing the creature. The werewolf howled in pain and rage, its eyes now fixed on Jacob with a malevolent intelligence. Elias fired next, his shot hitting the beast in the shoulder, slowing it but not stopping it. As the creature prepared to leap, Jacob knew this encounter was far from over. They were facing a creature of legend, a beast woven into the very fabric of Silverwood's history. And tonight it was a battle for survival under the watchful eye of the full moon. As the beast lunged forward, its claws ready to strike, Jacob and Elias braced themselves, knowing that their fight was not just with flesh and blood, but with a legacy of darkness that had haunted Silverwood for generations. The story of the night when the beast came to Moon's Hollow was only beginning, and its ending was still unwritten. As the werewolf bore down on them, its eyes burning with primal fury, Jacob managed to roll to the side, narrowly avoiding the swipe of its massive claws. The ground where he had been mere seconds ago was torn apart, leaving deep gouges in the earth. Elias, more agile, had already positioned himself for another shot. His rifle roared again in the cold night air, the bullet finding its mark. This time, the werewolf stumbled, a growl of pain escaping its bloodied maw. Despite the injury, 
The beast regained its balance with terrifying speed, its focus shifting between Jacob and Elias. It was calculating, intelligent in its movements, a far cry from the mindless beast lore often depicted. Jacob knew they were not just fighting a creature of strength and speed, but one of cunning and survival instinct. Using a brief moment when the werewolf surveyed its surroundings, Jacob whispered to Elias, We need to draw it to the old mill. The silver traps are still in place. Elias nodded slightly, understanding the plan. The old mill, part of Silverwood's forgotten industrial past, had been prepared years ago with traps made of pure silver. A legacy from Jacob's forefathers, designed specifically for a night such as this. Moving with deliberate care, they began to retreat slowly, making sure each step kept the werewolf's attention fixed on them and not on their path. As they moved, the creature followed, limping slightly, but still formidable. The moon cast eerie shadows through the trees, creating a surreal battlefield lit by natural light. The old mill loomed ahead, its structure dilapidated, the wood creaking ominously in the night wind. The large water wheel that once powered the mill hung motionless, a relic of a bygone era. Jacob and Elias entered through the wide front doors, their boots echoing on the old wooden floor. They split up, moving to predetermined positions around the room. The werewolf, driven by either rage or desperation, charged into the mill after them. As it crossed the threshold, Jacob triggered the first trap. A net made of woven silver threads fell from above, draping over the creature. The werewolf howled, its skin sizzling upon contact with the silver, but it tore through the net with a ferocious strength that sent shivers down Jacob's spine. Elias fired another shot, hitting the beast in the side. It stumbled, then righted itself, glaring at him with those luminous, hateful eyes. Jacob took the opportunity to move towards the next trap, a silver-coated spike that needed to be manually triggered. As he positioned himself near the lever, the werewolf seemed to sense the danger. It pivoted, turning its full attention towards Jacob. With a powerful leap, it bounded towards him, faster than expected. Jacob pulled the lever just as the werewolf was upon him. The spike drove up from the floor with a terrible force, impaling the creature through its underbelly. A terrible gut-wrenching scream filled the air, a sound of such agony and despair that it momentarily froze Jacob's heart. The werewolf writhed, trying to free itself, but the silver did its grim work, draining the life from the beast with each passing second. Elias rushed to Jacob's side, his rifle still trained on the creature. Together, they watched as the light in the werewolf's eyes faded, its body finally going limp. The transformation began then, the monstrous form shrinking, changing, until it was no longer a beast but a man, naked, bloodied, and utterly human. As the realization dawned on them, Jacob felt a wave of nausea mixed with an immense sorrow. The werewolf had been one of their own, a member of the community transformed by a curse they knew little about. The night's horror was not over, for they now faced the dawn with the knowledge that the beast had been one of their neighbors, his identity obscured by the dark magic of lycanthropy. The silence that followed was profound, filled with the weight of their actions and the secrets that the old woods of Silverwood still held. Jacob and Elias knew that the story was far from over. There would be more nights, more howls, and perhaps more unfortunate souls turned into creatures of the night. The legacy of the Silverwood Beast was eternal, woven into the very fabric of the town and its surrounding wilderness. As the early rays of dawn filtered through the broken windows of the old mill, Jacob and Elias stood over the lifeless body, each lost in their own turbulent thoughts. The transformation from beast to man didn't bring relief, only a profound sorrow and a slew of unanswered questions. Who had cursed this man? How many more were like him, hidden among them? perhaps unaware of their fateful transformations until the full moon revealed their monstrous nature. Elias broke the silence, his voice heavy with fatigue and emotion. We need to inform his family, Jacob. They deserve to know, and maybe they can offer us some clues about how this happened. Jacob nodded solemnly, the weight of leadership pressing down on him. Yes, we'll tell them, but we must do it with care and respect. This, this was not his choice. He looked down at the man, a local named Carl, whom he had known as a quiet, unassuming person, not capable of harm. The transformation had stolen his humanity, turning him into something out of a nightmare. 
The two men carefully carried Carl's body out of the mill, the forest around them waking up oblivious to the tragedy that had unfolded in its heart. They decided to take him to his family's home, a small farmhouse nestled on the outskirts of Silverwood. The journey was silent, each step heavy with the burden of their grim cargo. Upon reaching the farmhouse, they were met with confusion and then heartbreak as they explained what had happened. Carl's family, while devastated, wasn't entirely surprised. His wife, through tears, confessed that Carl had been terrified of the full moon nights for the past few months, locking himself away, claiming he felt not himself. She had attributed it to stress or an undiagnosed illness, never imagining the true horror of his situation. With Carl's death, a sense of urgency settled over Jacob. The curse was real, and it posed a threat not only to the individuals transformed by it, but to the entire community. The need for answers drove him back to the heart of Silverwood, to the archives housed in the local library, a collection of town records, personal diaries, and historical documents that rarely saw the light of day. Poring over old texts and whispered legends, Jacob searched for any mention of curses or werewolves. Hours turned into days, and just when exhaustion threatened to overtake him, he stumbled upon a diary from the late 1800s, belonging to a town founder. The entries spoke of a dark pact made with a wandering stranger, a deal meant to protect the town, but at a terrible cost. Every generation would face the curse, a punishment for a sin long forgotten by the townspeople, but remembered by the dark forces that had agreed to the pact. The realization that his ancestors might have been responsible for this curse was a bitter pill for Jacob. Determined to find a way to end the suffering, he delved deeper into the lore, seeking a way to break the cycle. Legend spoke of a ritual, one that could lift the curse, but it required an artifact. The silver dagger of the founder, rumored to be buried with him in an unmarked grave somewhere in the depths of Silverwood's forest. With this new goal, Jacob, accompanied by Elias, prepared to scour the forest for the founder's grave. Their mission was clear, but the path was fraught with danger, not only from the supernatural, but from the forest itself which seemed to guard its secrets jealously. As they set out, the forest seemed to watch them, ancient trees whispering secrets in the wind. The story of the Silverwood Beast was far from over, and as they ventured deeper into the woods, they knew that whatever lay ahead would test not just their courage, but the very fabric of their souls. The curse had been born in these woods, and if they were not careful, they too could become part of its dark legacy. Armed with maps, old texts, and a relentless determination, Jacob and Elias ventured deeper into the heart of the ancient woods. The dense canopy blotted out the sky, casting the forest floor into perpetual twilight. The air was thick with the musk of decay and old secrets, each step forward crunching on the carpet of fallen leaves and twigs. As they searched for any sign of the founder's grave, the days began to blur together, each one marked by the disheartening sameness of the forest. They set up camp each night, the fire's glow the only comfort in the oppressive darkness that surrounded them. On the third night, as the fire died down to embers, Elias, fatigued and sleep-deprived, thought he saw shadows dancing just beyond the light's reach. He shook Jacob awake, whispering urgently, something's out there, circling the camp. Jacob, alert despite his exhaustion, listened intently. Above the normal sounds of the night, he could hear it, a soft, rustling noise, deliberate and paced. Grabbing their rifles, they peered into the darkness, their breaths visible in the cold air. The rustling stopped abruptly, replaced by a heavy silence that seemed to thicken the air. Moments later, the silence shattered with a ferocious roar, and from the shadows emerged not one, but three figures. Their eyes glowed with a malevolent yellow light, their forms that of large wolves, yet standing unnervingly on their hind legs. The creatures of the curse, more than one a pack born from the darkest magic of Silverwood. The realization hit Jacob like a physical blow. The curse was not contained to a single unfortunate soul, but was a spreading blight capable of creating a lineage of beasts. As the werewolves advanced, Jacob and Elias fired, the gunshots echoing through the trees, startlingly loud in the silent forest. One werewolf fell, but the others continued, undeterred and seemingly enraged by the attack. Jacob and Elias retreated back to back, knowing the creature's superior strength and speed meant their chances were slim. 
As they backed into a tree, their escape cut off. The largest werewolf leapt, its massive body slamming into Jacob, knocking the rifle from his hands. Elias, in a desperate move, swung his rifle like a club, hitting the beast, but it barely registered the blow, its focus fixed on Jacob. As it raised a clawed hand to strike, Jacob felt the stark terror of impending death, his life's quest to protect Silverwood perhaps ending in these very woods. Suddenly, the ground beneath them gave way, the earth collapsing into a hidden cavern. They fell, tumbling into the darkness below, the werewolf falling with them. They landed in a heap on a cold stone floor, the impact knocking the wind out of Jacob. As he gasped for breath, his eyes adjusting to the dim light provided by the hole above, he realized they had fallen into a man-made structure, an old crypt, its walls lined with inscriptions and the silver dagger, gleaming faintly in the muted light, embedded in the chest of a skeleton lying in the center of the room. The werewolf, injured but still a formidable adversary, stirred. Jacob knew he had one chance. Crawling towards the skeleton, he grasped the dagger, feeling a surge of energy as his fingers wrapped around the hilt. He turned, just as the werewolf charged, plunging the dagger into its heart. The beast howled, a sound so filled with pain and rage it seemed to shake the very walls of the crypt. Then, it collapsed, its body beginning to shift back to human form, a local villager who had gone missing weeks before. Jacob and Elias, surrounded by the eerie quiet of the crypt, realized the terrifying truth. Their town was the heart of darkness, the curse not just a legacy, but an active, living malice that turned neighbor against neighbor. The crypt, the dagger, the beasts, all connected in a cycle that wouldn't end with the death of a single werewolf. As they climbed out of the crypt, the weight of their discovery heavy on their shoulders, they knew that Silverwood needed more than protection. It needed salvation from a curse that was both its birthright and its potential doom. The fight was far from over, and as they made their way back to town, the forest seemed to whisper and moan, mourning its lost children and bracing for the battles yet to come. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 